Hello everyone, Lisa here. So I saw something really fun on Facebook this morning. Uh, I'm a member of the Stitch Artist Digitizing Fans group page on Facebook. And I saw a post by Ed Jeff. Hello Ed and uh, Mrs. Jeff. <laughs> because I think she was the driving force behind this question. She wanted to find an easier way to digitize the daisy so that you're only removing the hoop one time to fuse down all of your applique pieces. You know, originally I did not think about digitizing this and offering that. Uh, most of my followers do not even have an embroidery machine and I really like to make my patterns something that everyone can join in and sew along to. But for those of you who do have the software and embroidery machines and you're learning the digitizing portion of uh, sewing, I thought maybe this video would be a little bit more helpful than the last two that I published yesterday. So yesterday I showed a really basic way to turn your SVG file or your uh, FCM file into an applique and that's by using uh, the applique tab up at the top and that's very basic and simple way to turn something into uh, an applique file. If you want to take it to the next level and have it stitch out a lot easier <laughs> and save yourself some work at the machine I'm going to show you the way that I do it. Now one thing that I agree with most uh, of the comments on your post, I totally agree with actually all of them because there's no one way to do anything. Uh, I've always said that there's several ways to accomplish a task and so I'm just going to show you my way if I were going to stitch all these with my embroidery machine. This is the way that I would do it and I'm using Stitch Artist 2 and we're going to first I'm going to show you, I've already gone through the steps, I'm going to show you what this will do at the machine. You'll see right at the top I have black, red, and yellow, three colors. All going to stitch one color at the end, but I've broken it up into three colors, three stops, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. I want to go through the stitch simulator so that you see what we're going to achieve here in just a minute. The first thing it's going to do is go through and stitch down the position stitch of all of your pieces at one time. Then it's going to do a tack down stitch and then finally a satin stitch around all of your pieces. Just like so. I'm going to speed it up as fast as it'll go to try to keep this video a little bit on the shorter side because we're going to be doing uh, a little bit of work to get this file to where what you see now. So there we are. There's the satin stitch. Uh, let's go back to the very beginning. <laughs> this is the SVG file and uh, nothing's been done to it. It's just an SVG brought in and uh, I'm hoping that you can see this tab and this tab. I might scoot you over just a little bit like that. I'm sorry. Maybe if I start doing more tutorials uh, on the computer, I'll look into... Someone gave me a really good suggestion last night for uh, a way to make videos on the desktop. Uh, we're sticking very simple. Okay, so I have my SVG. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the objects box right over to the right. And I'm up at the top. I'm going to open up my SVG and you can see it has all of the sections for my SVG right there. I'm going to select the top one. I'm going to hold down the shift button and I'm going to click on this bottom one. And you'll see that it has selected the whole design. I'm going to come over here and go back up to the Create Design tab and I'm going to select a running stitch. Now just like that we've turned the SVG file, all of the pieces, into a running stitch. I'm going to come over here to the Properties and this is where you can uh, change the color. 
You can also change the length of the running stitch and you can add a, a um, tie at the beginning and tie at the end if you want to. Usually on my uh, position stitch, I don't usually do that, but some people do. So right now we've got all of these jump stitches and everything's in a crazy order. So the next thing I'm going to do is reorder the way that this is going to stitch out. So up here, and I'm not sure that you can see that, there's going to be a box uh, that is sequence objects by selecting one at a time. It's blue, red, and black. It's three boxes and one little tab. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to start selecting the order that I want my daisy petals to stitch in. So let's start with this top one and then I'll select the next one and then the next one and then down at the bottom the next one, the next one, and then the center circle. So now I've changed the order. If you see right here, it's going to show you the, posi uh, the order in which everything will stitch. Now I still have these crazy red dotted lines. Those are the jump stitches. And let's go ahead and take care of that next because we want to avoid all of these crazy jump stitches. We'll start by selecting the first one up at the very top and you'll see the red and the green little bow ties. Those are where your needle will start and stop. I'm just going to select the green, which is the start, and let's bring that down to the bottom corner. And then we'll go back up and select the red stop I call it a bow tie. I don't know what else to call that. <laughs> and I'm going to move it back down to this little tiny corner here. Let's select the next petal that it's going to jump to. And I'm going to move the start. The start. There we go. Right close to where we stopped on the previous petal. And I'm going to move the stop. Let's say all the way down close to this next petal. And I'm going to do this for each one. Let's see, the stop will move over. The stop will move over. Let's move the start close to where we stopped. And the stop down into this corner. We're on this pedal now. You see we still have this long jump stitch. We're going to move the start. Oops. The start button over here and the stop. The stop. <laughs> We're going to move right there. Now we can select the center circle. I'm going to move the start close to where we stopped on this last petal and I'll move the stop right there. So now all of those crazy jump stitches are gone. It's going to move very efficiently from one petal to the next and then to the center circle which we will stitch last. So there is our position stitch. The very next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to the objects menu again and I'm going to reselect each one of my objects. I'm going to copy and paste just like this. Now I have two of everything and I'm going to come back over to the objects menu. And this second set that we just pasted on top, I'm going to change the color. Let's make that, uh, let's see, red. And by changing the color, what's going to happen is it's going to go through and stitch all of your position stitch at one time and then stop. The machine will stop sewing. Then you can remove your hoop and fuse down all of your petals and your circle and then put the hoop back in the machine. When you press go again, it's going to stitch out 
the tack down stitch and this is everything you see in red so it's going to sew down and secure all of your applique pieces now you can keep that the same uh, stitch length you can tie off if you want to that is your position stitch now the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it one more time. So now we're down here with all of our pieces and let's change the color of this to, let's see, yellow. So once it's done with all of your tack down stitches, the machine will stop again and then you're ready to start doing your satin stitch. Right now, it's all a running stitch. I'm gonna go up here and choose the satin border. And just like that, there's our satin stitch. Now you can come over here and adjust the width. You can adjust the density. You know, all of that is gonna be personal to the material you're using, the thread you're using, the needle size you're using, all of that matters. Uh, and it's gonna be up to you as the creator and the one sewing this as to the adjustments that you need to make there. Now one thing I do want to do with the satin stitch is I'm going, while it's all selected, I am going to do a tie it entry and tie it exit so it will tie off each time it starts and stops a new petal and a circle. And just like that we have a satin stitch. Now you'll notice my circle is very close to all of my petals. So let me show you how I would fix that. I'm going to go through and select the circle satin border. I'm going to move up and I'm going to select by pushing the control button. I'm going to select the uh, tack down stitch circle and I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to select the position stitch circle. So now I have all three circles selected and we can adjust the size of all three at one time. And move that right in the center just like that. So just like that we've turned all of our applique or our SVG or even you can do the same thing with the FCM file if you want to. Uh, just like that, we have a position stitch, we have a tack down stitch, and we have a satin stitch. And it's going to be a lot less removing the hoop and a lot less manual work for you to do at the embroidery machine. Now one thing I do want to say is that at this point you might want to resave your cutting file because the cutting file that I created for the Daisy Days pattern was meant for using it at uh, your cutting machines. Once you've turned all of this into applique by digitizing the file, you might want to actually increase the size of your petals and your circle so that your tack down stitch catches your pieces of fabric. You know, right now it's all on the very edge of your applique. So you can simply, let's see, come back over to, let's see, the satin. Uh, yes, <laughs> the satin stitch. Let's close this for a second. I'm going to, and I'm not sure if this makes a difference or not, but I'm going to select all of these. And then we're going to come down to the properties menu. I'm going to select color. I'm going to click on the color and a new box opens up. If you go up to the top, you'll see color and then an applique tab. Select applique. I'm going to select applique position. And then I'm going to inflate the size of my cutting file. Uh, let's see, one, two, point six millimeters. I'm not sure if that's exactly right. You might have to play around with that a little bit. And then I'm going to hit save. 
And what that's going to do is save a new FCM file, a new cutting file that inflates or increases the size of your applique by 0.6 millimeters. And uh, that should be enough for your tack down stitch to actually sew onto your fabric and keep that in place during the satin stitch. So that is how I would design if I were going to stitch out all of my daisies uh, using my embroidery machine and bringing uh, the level of digitizing up to uh, the next level versus the simple applique tab up at the top. I'm really hoping that this is helpful. Um, <laughs> hoping that I didn't leave out anything. If you have any questions you can jump down to the bottom and uh, happy sewing and uh, I think it's great that uh, there's so many people out there who are learning to digitize their files and uh, elevate their knowledge and again really I did not uh, offer this because imagine all the different stitch files that you'd have to offer to have uh, an embroidery file included in with the pattern. Uh, I'm, I'm really not a digitizer, a person who sells digitized patterns, but I do create them for my own use. And I'm hoping that this video is helpful for your use. Okay, everyone, I am off to uh, enjoy the day with a barbecue and the family. I already have my video made for Monday, so we'll see you all Monday. Bye.